have was like read the entire of my immortal. The tips of my fingers were cold. In fact, it was too quiet. My fingers too were too quiet. cold. There was definitely something up this morning. And those are the days where you wake up too quickly. I am enthralled by your storytelling. Get me stuck. No, I'm just gonna <laughs> really annoy the audience by never ending the story. No, <laughs> keep telling the story. There. No, you guys want to win. You, you didn't want story time. We don't I just... need you to win, Squid Man. <laughs> what facts, Emlorok? I said I love Squid Man. He's uh -huh. the best lad hey. in the world. <laughs> What was that oh, about no. not needing me? Are you Roller. kidding? Don't jump so to me. You said you don't need me, Seth. Yeah, you're just a thing. You're not a person. I am a oh, thing. I'm beneath you, <laughs> man. Oh, wow, who just died? <laughs> I did. Okay. They're like steel eels. Armor. Oh, you saved me, Squid. I live because of you. I have I shutters, but I'm not Oh, good. we almost got him. Oh, you got it. You got this. Got two. There's just an arrow Kill him! Kill him! Ah! Hey, 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 hey. Yay! That's not terrifying. <laughs> oh, look who's late. No, I was making sure my equipment was working. Uh, Vic, there's a penalty for being late. It's called reading super chats. Please read undeads. Okay. Unless it's a bad one, then I might not read it. It's yeah. not a bad one. It's a great one. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm going to be the judge of that in like two seconds. All right. What does it say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Undead, and we're making this very clear that Undead said this, I did a fart. Quote, Undead. Vic, you did a fart? Is that why you're late? Yes, that's exactly why I'm late. Okay, location right. object is first person, and then the other two people give another object each. The person doing the thing has to tell a story using that location and the three objects. Sheldon shop? AK-47. It was a really great day. So uh, about a week ago, you know how we haven't had any patches for a while? We haven't gotten any new weapons in Splatoon? Well, Sheldon yeah. finally had a new idea. He's just been really dry out of ideas ever since uh, he finally dropped Sheldon's picks. But Sheldon received some brand new inspiration. He found this newsletter from one of those weird human gaming institutions and decided to try and create one of the weapons that he saw. And oh my God, it might be the strongest weapon that we have in the game yet. It's called an AK-47? Quick, give us I, another I, I object, Seth. Uh, a gift? And you know what? Sheldon decided it's his gift to the community. He's not even gonna charge you for it. If you buy another weapon at the shop, we'll just give it to you for free. Uh, Astro, he's just object. gonna go on the house. Coupon. A coupon? But I just told you, you won't need a coupon. It's it's free. I mean, if you bring the coupon, he'll just give it to you anyway for free because it is a gift. I mean, he might even give you two if you give him the right coupon, but uh, yeah, we're limiting that one only to the first hundred customers that come in the store. We expect it's gonna be a pretty crazy day. It's gonna drop on first day of winter, December 21st. It's a pretty important day anyway. So we're just adding to the celebration. It's very you know? important. Cephalorock, <laughs> name a random place and a random object. It's Astro's turn to tell the story. <laughs> Uh, camp trigger fish. It doesn't have to be rod. in game. I want to camp trigger fish and fish with my fishing rod. Slicey. <laughs> Thick? Bugs. I use bugs as bait. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. Area uh, alien. I know what you were going to say. And then I saw some aliens in the sky. What I was fishing. <laughs> Great story. I just want to note that we were winning until we started telling stories and then we lost. Are you telling that I'm that. trying to throw? You tell me, Mr. Aerospray. One. <laughs> How did we play for five minutes and you had one? Admittedly, it is a very Full good match. painting weapon. Let's be real. Thank you, Snowy Twitchy, uh, for the member on Squidman's side. Thank you yeah, for I supporting our dear friend. Thank you, everyone. I don't deserve such love. You don't. Wow. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course you got. You do. My story was concise and fit the prompt. I would get an A on that story. <laughs> okay. Location. The bedroom. Object. Oh my God. Think well about it, please. A bucket. A green bucket with three compartments. There is no trace lodgers in my bedroom. So I hate that weapon, and you should. Die. Well, maybe you should explain that in your story. Once upon a time, I was invited into Splatoon, and then I tried every weapon, and all the slashers suck. And if you like it, you're terrible. Uh, what's that have to do with your bedroom? Uh, it happened in my bedroom online. You played Splatoon in your There's, bedroom. I've always played Splatoon in my bedroom. People who play in their living room are heathens. I play yes. in my basement. 
most of the time, admittedly. I play in my office. That is also my dining room. That's also my living room because it's a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> I, uh, your final object is uh, a trophy. Then I got a trophy for smack talking all price lodgers in the world. It's the best achievement I've ever gotten. Probably. Happy ending. Oh, I, don't, I don't think I like all this rain. No, no, the second booyah bomb! Very heavily on squid. Women. I mean, okay, let's be real. It's kind of hard for a C Junior to fight a jet. I'll show you. Ah, uh, Cassie. What's up, Cassie? Can we get a hello in Korean from Vic and Astro? Anyang. Anyang. I only knew that word because of Arrested Development. Ita <laughs> gabwayo. The Kanto region, the Earth badge. It was a dark, stormy night. A shot and rang out. A maid screen. Yeah. The pirate ship appeared over the horizon. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Snoopy. Uh, <laughs> no. It was a dark and stormy night. A young Vic Vian sits on the couch playing Pokemon Crystal. If you didn't know, way back when, in those video games, you could go to not one region, but two. She found herself in the throes of the beautiful game that is Pokemon Crystal. A very powerful team in her hands because at this point she could already go to the Kanto region. She walked into Giovanni's gym. I forget if Giovanni owns the gym actually in Crystal anymore. But as it started, cream. she walks into the gym looking for her earth badge, but finds instead only a pile of whipped cream on the floor. It looks like this, this copy of Pokemon Crystal is bugged. Maybe it's one of, those, one of those copies from GameStop that's cursed, like in those fan fictions? A microphone suddenly morphs out of my Game Boy. I scream. I don't understand what's happening. I can't play Pokemon anymore. It's recording everything that I'm talking about. And soon, <gasps> soon it captures my own voice and includes it in the Pokemon Crystal video game? I open up the radio in my video game and my voice is coming out? How do I make it stop? I ask, but the only thing I hear is just my, my own screams. Oh my God. Is what Pokemon has become? Butterfinger. Oh, we're still going. <laughs> I'm so surprised by this turn of events that I I, I, I dropped the, the Game Boy to the floor. I have Butterfingers. I realized you meant the candy, but uh, I mean, I can have those too. <laughs> fear. It was my one true fear. Hearing my own voice talk back to me because at that time I was very unhappy with the sound of my own voice. There's just no way to get around from it. I tried to smash my Game Boy on the ground. I tried to smash the Butterfinger candies into my Game Boy, but it just, it won't shut up. I just, I finally accept panic. my fate and I, I panicked a little bit. I, I was very worried. I grabbed Izzy and I brought her back and I said, Izzy, I do not understand why my Game Boy is making all these sounds. The sounds are me. How do I make it stop? She shrugs, she Lightning. sighs. With her innate powers from loving to role play, the one and only Pokemon Pichu, she summons a Thunderbolt and strong as lightning, breaks my Game Boy into many, many pieces. I am here. Fear. No, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, where do I take this now? I think I made like three endings and I had to keep extending it. I'm sorry, Ashton, I stole your story. <laughs> oh no, you're good. All right, we're gonna do the story time thing again. All right, Area 51, the video camera. In September of 2019, we all planned to do the Area 51 raid. We were caught on camera, video camera. Banana. Phone. Luckily, one of our friends brought a banana. We split the banana, the single banana, 121 ways. So we all had one sliver of banana. We tried to use our phone to call our moms to pick us up. There was no service because of outside of Area 51 with the video cameras and the sliver of bananas. And now later, we're thankful that we don't have to walk thousands of miles to get home because we can call our moms to come and get us. Yay. <laughs> All right, Seth, pumpkin pie, the recording studio. I once wanted to make a cooking channel for kind of cosplay food, but then Feast of Fiction kind of got that idea first. But pumpkin pie is my favorite pie, even though I haven't had any pies ever. Wait, so, pumpkin's yeah. your favorite, but you haven't had one. I love it because it's pumpkin and pumpkins are cute. Keep oh, uh, frozen. I, mean, I pork. My pork. I said fork twice. Pork. Like the thing you use to eat the, 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 the pie, unless you want to eat pork. Okay, meat pies are not real, and I don't care who you are or you <laughs> like meat pie. Those don't count. You know what's much better? Than a meat pie, a glorified meat pie that is completely closed, aka an empanada. An empanada is delicious. It's best baked. I'm sorry if you disagree with me. Yeah, like you have to bake them. That, that's their best self. Yes. Uh, so many people that I meet eat them fried and only fried, and I'm like sad face. Uh, it's because it depends bad. on where you're from. Well, I don't know about other Latin American countries. It is very true. They think that Mexicans don't care about the rest of Latin America. But I mean, who cares about other countries, right? I 
Who cares? Yeah. You're not every day like love Chile. Like what? I don't even care about Mexico. Oh. I don't care about nothing. Alright, Vic, your turn. Yeah. Uh, my current objective is to play the video game. That's I'm ready. On my team. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that was your plan all along, wasn't it? No, Tyler. Ooh. What? Nah. No. What? You little <laughs> muffin. Oh no, everything that went wrong went wrong. Hell yeah, it's a Korean drama. <laughs> yeah, I woke up without my memories at a hospital. And so I love the wrong person now. And my brother bought me a pie, so I think he's actually my boyfriend. So I try to apologize to my brother as the protagonist walks in again. And the protagonist is like, but why? And you're like, no. It's my brother. No, I don't re remember it's my brother. Oh no. All my memories are gone. And as I'm about to marry the wrong person, my memories return and I remember that the protagonist gave me pizza at school that one time. So I fell in love with him since the third grade. But now I must Aww. choose between two beautiful K-pop men. Who do <laughs> I choose? The end credits start rolling so that you can ship me with either person. All right, Ash, rest Nick? stop and belt. Uh -huh. I was driving and I had to stop at a rest stop to take a big poopy, so I had to unclasp my belt. And then I sat on the gross toilet and then got a disease and died. Pro tip, don't use rest stop bathrooms. Halo. It's not a good story, it's a cautionary tale. Well, I so I died it. and then in the afterlife, um, it turns out it's all Microsoft up there. So we started playing Halo. Glass. So we were playing Halo and I got 10 kills in a row. You know what that's called? That's a kill you near. So then I got to come back to life and I went back to the bathroom and, and then I found my glass. And then I remembered that I had my PMP certification test tomorrow. I've already forgotten oh, no. what the password is, so I'm gonna remake this room and remake it. <laughs> Bucket and Bucket. Eiffel Tower. All right. Well, I was on top of the Eiffel Tower with a bucket and police. with it, I killed everybody who got on the tower. The police went to arrest me because I shouldn't be killing people, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure about it. Pretty sure you shouldn't kill people in real life, but at that Pro moment, I wasn't sure. sure. Pro controller. All right. So um, at the police station, the policeman had a pro controller and I was like, oh, do you play Splatoon? I could kill you there too. Huh. And then they um, he had a Coca-Cola bottle as a drink. And I was like, well, now you can't play Splatoon because I'm pouring Coca-Cola in your pro Fred controller Bill. and now it's dead. Because What's of the Coca-Cola incident, we had to run a kilometer in the treadmill and dab. And then we dabbed on the treadmill and then we fell because we kept the dab pose. So then we kind of just rolled into the last part of the treadmill and died. <laughs> The Bible and Camp Triggerfish. Every day I wake up in the morning and I look to my left and on my table, instead of there being a mess of random objects and plushies, there is now just a singular Bible. And I pick up that Bible every single day. And the first thing that I do to start my morning is I pray to the sign of the cross and then I ask very kindly that Camp Triggerfish be removed from this mortal plane. But despite me praying every day for the last five years since the tune came out, I have not gotten my wish yet. I hope that in the next five years immortality prayer, that I will gain immortality so I can go ahead and just teleport my way into Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo Switch and delete it myself. I will go into the mainframe and I will hack it so we will never see Splatoon 2 ever again. Not Splatoon 2, no, I want to see Splatoon 2. I'll never see Chip Perfect again. Then I'll, I'll take a microchip that has all this Splatoon data. I'll keep all the data properly coded and safe, except for the trigger fish part. Hufflepuff. So when I throw it into the microwave, it will only cook the trigger fish data and then I'll go and take that microchip. I'll put it into the Nintendo servers. But oops, there was a mistake. Instead of getting rid of trigger fish, I put trigger fish in every single rotation. Miley oh, Cyrus. No. That sounds like something that a Hufflepuff <laughs> would do, right? And all the music has been replaced with just various Miley Cyrus tunes from like the very early part of her career. Like seven things and only seven things. But I, I, I didn't know how to fix it. My immortality had worn off. So I was just a normal human being again. <laughs> So what I did was I used the powers that be, aka the fact that I have an uncle that works at Nintendo, and I told him what I did, and he said, oh, it's okay, you're sweet, young Victoria, I will fix it. He clapped his hands twice, and because he works at Nintendo and always fixes all of my mistakes, he was able to get the game back to normal. And then everyone forgot, and everybody clapped. What about the Bible? The Bible went back on the table. I never got my wish. Triggerfish is still in the game. I'm still praying in the Bible. Duh.
All right, tax forms and uh, cow farm. So I got a call the other day and um, it was this woman and she's like, hey, can we like meet up sometime? I'm just like, who is this? How did you get this number? And she's like, don't worry about it. I saw you and I saw your enormous feet and I want some of that action. So let's meet up sometime. And I'm just like, yeah, let's totally do that. So we meet up at the Starbucks, but not the Starbucks near me. The Starbucks that was like 45 minute drive. And like my, my car is not a car right now i'm not even done with the first term yet hang on <laughs> and of course if i'm going to meet someone i'm going to bring my son with me my son being the dog so me and the dog are like driving around in the car and then we get to the starbucks and there's outdoor seating thankfully that's the only reason i agreed to meet this woman there and then when we get there she's like hello thank you for coming i'm actually with the irs and this is an audit and we knew you wouldn't come unless we like tricked you into coming i was like are you kidding me fine mm -hmm. let's just get this over with and then let's try to you say the moon <laughs> i was like all right fine let's get this over with and then maybe we can see some full moon if you know what i mean anyways we start looking over all my tax forms and then oh, no. at one point she's just like okay so you have this like cow farm that you didn't like declare at all and i'm like yeah that's a that's a charity dairy farm it's but don't don't tax that don't worry about that it's a dairy she's, farm <laughs> she's just like that's not how taxes work you have to declare your thing even if you're trying to hide it and i'm like well i'm not Better. i'm not trying to hide it i just say senator I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just trying to do my taxes and donate some milk to charity. Get off my back, woman. And then she's just like, well, no, you have to do that. And I'm like, well, I'd make no money. Why are you auditing me of all people? Oh, sorry, I didn't declare my 33 cents of revenue I made in the past year. Boom, you made me say it. Made me say it out loud. The fact that I blew it last year in revenue and I didn't make any money last year. So I didn't make that much money. Why don't you audit one of these senators who has 17 different families with 18 different women somehow? Why don't you add one of them? They're, they've got plenty of stuff to hide. Oh, that sounds like it was very real. <laughs> Harry says, Captain, calm down! <laughs> Realize his weight is the cow farm, you two. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a metaphor for YouTube the whole time. Yeah, oh my, my stories have layers. They call me the Christopher Nolan of improv stories. Charcoal <laughs> face wash, the biggest truck stop in the United States. There was this truck driver who had to make a delivery for coal because Santa died. Because something has to die in my stories. Oh my so God. this guy is delivering the gifts now. But then he got an itch in his face and he had to clean it up. So he grabbed some of the coal for the naughty people e and charged it into the e-liter and then shot his face and got a facial of that. Sweet carbon face wash. He didn't die though. I decide who dies where. So um, he got canceled for doing blackface and <laughs> he married another inmate in prison and divorced. he apologized oh my god and then they got divorced but it was in good terms because the trucker by now was more mature and knew how to apologize properly on the internet and then he died because now i felt like it but he died happy can i say it's very concerning how much you relish in the power of deciding exactly when these characters in your story <laughs> decide to kick the bucket oh oh i guess um and then 200 years later he resurrected as a fire emblem character he was hot now at every point in his life uh and then he lived forever and then he died Sorry. i woke up and it was weird because it was quiet and i was like it's not usually quiet when i wake up because i live in the city and it was like too quiet. Also, my fingers were cold, and I'm like, why are my fingers cold? Like my fingers are never cold. Like my feet get cold. My like my ears can get cold, but my, why are my fingers cold? It was quiet. It was cold, and I was worried something happened. But I was still in bed, and I like get up, go to my phone, and it was like 5 a.m. I'm like, I don't need to be up. But then like my ears like actually connected to my brain. It was like it's quiet. Why it's not good, you need to respond to this. And my fingers got that cold sense again. I'm like, all right, what is in my apartment? So I like stumble over and turn on the light. The light was on, but uh, wasn't wearing my glasses, so I couldn't see anything. Like, oh, what yeah, is going on? I can't bat. see, it's freezing cold, and it's quiet. And it's not supposed to be quiet. The moment I find my glasses, I realize that even though I had pressed the light switch, it didn't turn on. And now I'm getting really worried. It's cold, the lights aren't on, and I can see. I feel like I'm finally beginning to wake up, but then the worst thing happens. I'm really woken up. The fire alarm goes off. Oh, oh my god. 
And this is when I lived on the 14th floor. The lights aren't on, it's freezing cold, I'm only wearing shorts and boxers, it's really quiet, and the fire alarm's going off, and I'm just like, why? Sounds like it just became leg day. As soon as the fire alarm went off, it stopped. Now I'm really worried, like, how did the fire alarm go off go, Arr! and then stop like what's going down i put on my sweatshirt and i peek outside and i go to the stairs and i saw something i didn't Rip. really like need to or like want to see what did you see there's this dude smoking in the staircase and you're not supposed to do that and not only was it just right next to the fire alarm it was just like mm -hmm. So I had waken up, thought about going downstairs because some person decided to smoke in the wrong place next to a sensor at like who knows when AM. And there's buttons in my apartment so I can change how like the power worked. So like I wasn't able to use my main remote to turn on the light because I had like triggered a main switch. So I had to mess with the main switch next to my door. So I had like freaked out about nothing over some dude just smoking in the stairwell. Well, maybe you shouldn't have been smoking in the stairwell. Yeah. That's my true story. I feel like you were waiting a long time to tell that story. And that's why you wanted us to story tell today. No, not really. It's also not a Wait, very good did, story. 